Where the hell are we? Hey everyone, and welcome to GWS Films for yet another VFX tutorial. This particular tutorial is going to cover a map painting that we did for our uh, Pulp Adventure VFX short. Uh, I'm going to kind of gloss over some of the details here just to, for the sake of time and for your uh, enjoyment. But most of this is pretty standard knowledge in terms of uh, using After Effects with uh, motion tracking, rotoscoping, etc. Uh, but I'll show you basically how I pieced this all together and uh, eventually composited it all together for the final product. So as you can see, this is the raw shot. And this is the final shot that we are going for. Uh, we shot this outside, obviously, and uh, in hindsight, I would have probably shot these uh, three guys in front of a blue screen to make the uh, pulling them out much easier for the foreground element. But, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty, and I didn't do that. So to get things started, we're going to take our raw footage here, drop it into a new comp. I have named this uh, Shot 6H. And uh, I'm going to skip over these steps, but essentially what I'm going to do here is I'm first going to track the motion of this background using either the native tracker in After Effects or using the Mocha tracker, Track in Mocha AE. I've gone ahead and dropped in the null object here, which I've applied the track information to. And as you can see, it tracks pretty darn well. We have a nice smooth track here. And then what I'm going to do from there is I'm going to actually track each of these individual subjects here in the... Uh, in the shot, and then I'm going to rotoscope them. For those of you who don't know what rotoscoping is, it is essentially frame by frame or 10 frames per, you know, with a keyframe, tracing out these guys to uh, separate them from the footage and create a new uh, layer. Uh, with these guys, they don't move too much, so it was pretty easy to rotoscope them. With her, she does move a little bit, so I had to kind of adjust things a little bit more with overlapping layers and such. This is the final rotoscope that I did here. This is done quite a while ago. Uh, as you can see, I have the individual tracks, I have the uh, mat layer, and then I have the um, footage uh, clip per each section of track. And with a little bit of adjusting, some very slight feathering, I get a very nice rotoscope here that I can then apply as a foreground layer to our final mat painting. So after those essential steps are done, it's time to move on to our actual mat painting. This is the matte painting I received from Ryan Quackenbush, who is an incredible graphic artist and matte artist. Uh, he did this completely uh, from scratch based on our shot that I showed you earlier. And our foreground uh, characters are going to go right about here in the matte. And as we look at this, we can see it's pretty still. Like, this, this is the matte painting. This is not a video. So what we're going to have to do is add motion and life to this scene. Now, luckily, we've got a lot of detail in here. But uh, what I'm looking at primarily is the motion in the scene. So we're going to have to add waterfalls here, motion to these waterfalls. We're going to have to add some moving atmosphere and smoke and mist. Uh, we're going to have to add motion to this water surface here. And then also a neat little trick I learned using a turbulent displacement map, which is usually used for heat haze and stuff. Uh, I added motion to these leaves in the background. And we'll get to all that soon. First thing is first. Let's look at these waterfalls. And uh, again, for the sake of time, I'm just going to open the comp that I already have completed with all of the various layers for the mat. So this is my final mat layer, and we're just going to focus on the waterfalls for now. Now for the waterfalls, what I did is I basically used some uh, cheap free footage that I found on YouTube of all places, which you can find right here. This is the footage that I used for the waterfalls. All I did was a basic key light. Uh, to, uh, to extract the green, and I also applied a time warp to it to slow it down a little bit because the original footage was a little bit too fast, and being that it's a very massive waterfall, I wanted to make sure that it had a lot of weight to it. So there's a little preview of what the waterfall looks like. And what I did, as you can see, is I put them into a pre-comp so that later I could uh, mask these elements and uh, put them into the scene properly. So both waterfalls A and B are in a pre-comp. Same thing done to each of them. It's just a matter of scaling them down and, and adjusting them uh, using masks and, and such to uh, fit right into your scene. So as you can see, them both operating very well. And uh, after I did the waterfalls, I added a little bit of smoke 
to the waterfalls, or in this case, mist. And I also did a little masking here to make this part of the matte foreground layer so that everything falls behind it as it is in the original painting as well over here. And if I play this back, you can see very subtle smoke rising up out of the mat. There you go, you can see a little bit of smoke kind of billowing out from under the waterfall, doubling for mist. Same thing happening over here, over this ridge. So now that we've got our waterfalls all set up, it's time to focus on the final water element, which is of course this massive lake right here. Now what I did essentially is I actually downloaded another cheap uh, free uh, CG element here. It was just a little bit of water footage. Looks pretty terrible as it is. I mean, I'm sure it would be great for other projects, but in our case, it looks very unrealistic. So we're going to have to do a few adjustments to it to make it work in our scene. First and foremost is I completely desaturated the element. You can see when it's saturated versus desaturated, all I really want is the movement and the uh, displacement of the water from the footage. And of course, I applied the time warp to slow it down. And then I basically just did a little mask around here of the shoreline and uh, the water lines, etc. And I feathered it to about... Uh, I feathered it to about 9 pixels, not very much, just enough to soften it up around the edges. And once I play this back, you can see a nice little subtle movement to the water, little waves, etc. Uh, nothing too crazy, it's not an ocean, it's just a lake, and there is a little bit of turbulence and... Uh, wake coming from the waterfalls crashing down into there. So I just wanted a subtle move to it uh, to give it some uh, realism. So now we've gotten our waterfalls and our water surface. Um, very simple things to do. You know, I hope I'm not blowing through this stuff too fast. Uh, I, you know, I'd like to think it's, it's pretty simple. Uh, I haven't been doing anything crazy, just masking things out. Uh, the water surface, for example, in the uh, blending mode, I selected soft light. Here's what it looks like when it's not blended. And here's what it looks like when it is blended, soft light. So that way we keep the reflections in the water and it kind of blends into it really nicely and uh, doesn't stand out too much. All right, now that we've got the water surfaces done, let's move on to these leaves. Now, uh, this is a really cool little trick that I learned uh, just kind of experimenting. I took the uh, turbulent displacement map in an, in an adjustment layer where you go to layers, new adjustment layer, and I applied effect, distort, turbulent displace, and you can see it right here. Uh, I went ahead and set a keyframe at the top of the clip to the end of the clip, uh, starting at one going to, I believe, 17, yep. And we set the amount to 54, the size to two. So if I play this back here, you can see very subtly the leaves moving on these trees. I'm going to go ahead and move in a little closer for you guys so you can take a look. You can see it doesn't look very convincing close up, but when we back off and zoom out for the final wide shot, it gives the impression of these leaves moving and these trees and from the wind. So that adds a whole other level of realism to it. You can also obviously use the turbulent displace uh, effect to do a heat haze in the horizon and things like that, but for this I decided to use it for the leaves. All right, so now that we've got our waterfalls done, our lake done, our leaves, and our smoke elements under the waterfalls, it's time to add a little bit of atmosphere to this mat to give some motion to all of this mist and fog that we see. So what I did is I basically just applied this atmosphere footage from Action Essentials, pre-comped it and slowed it down using Time Warp to give it more weight. And I masked it off just on this horizon line, and if I turn this layer on, we can see that the uh, atmosphere moves very slowly, kind of crawls through the environment. Now all I did to help blend this was do a blending mode add. So here you can see me playing this back, very, very subtle movement of the smoke across the environment, across the space. And it just adds another small element of realism and life to this otherwise still image. And now for the little final touch that I did, I added these flying birds. And I again found these guys on YouTube, free stock footage, they had a blue key to them. Simple key light, keys it out, no need to pre-comp. Drop them into our comp. And then all I did was a simple animation using the position keyframes. And of course the ever important motion blur is turned on and selected on the flying birds layer. Simply moving them across the comp and ending right about there, which is where I know the shot will end. So if we play this back, we can see just a little example of this entire comp brought together 
bringing motion to this still matte painting. And now that we're done bringing motion and life to this mat, we are ready to composite our two shots together using the rotoscoped foreground elements and this final matte comp. All right, here we are in my final comp. What I have done is dragged my shot 6H roto comp down into a layer, and I've dragged my temple matte comp down into the layer as well beneath that. And what we're gonna do is uh, make a few additions to bring this thing all together. So this is as it stands with the untouched Shot 6H Roto and Temple Matte Comp just laid into it. Now what I've done is I've paired my Temple Matte Comp to the Null Object background track that we had earlier from Shot 6H Roto. I've gone ahead and pick whipped that. So if we scroll through this, we can see that it moves very nicely with the tracked background. Looks very natural, looks realistically placed into the scene. And now our first move is gonna be adding a little bit of atmosphere uh, to just bring this all together. So I'm gonna take the same thing I did earlier with this atmosphere footage. I'm gonna slow it down using time warp in its own comp. And we're just gonna place it into the scene and mask it off so that it basically just kind of coats this area with a strong feather of probably 100 just to let it fall off here. And that just kind of brings together the smoke coming from behind them from the plane wreckage and the fog in this entire scene. So if I turn that on and off, you'll see that it sort of brings it together a little bit there. And it'll also add a little bit of foreground motion as well. Now the next thing we're gonna do is add a small lens flare to the scene. I didn't really want to do a crazy, you know, intense lens flare. I kind of wanted a very light glare to it. So what I did is I really removed a lot of the settings in optical flares and just used a little bit of a glow as you can see here, on an adjustment layer. I dropped the opacity to about 25%, and I think it ties it all together rather nicely, especially with all the glare coming off of these clouds and the fog just light bouncing all over the place. And then the final touch is to add grain. I simply created another adjustment layer, going to new adjustment layers, went to effects, noise and grain, add grain, selected my uh, film stock, and I dropped everything down to basically about a one. And if you look really closely, the grain is very subtle, but it does bring all of these elements together as if they were in one. You see a grain here and it carries over here and over here. Now, if I play this back with all of the elements, you'll be able to see our final composite, uncolor corrected and of course not cropped yet, but you'll be able to see how all of these work together as one. All right, here is our final shot preview. And all we gotta do after this is export it color correct it, and add our widescreen mat. Well, I hope you guys have enjoyed this and learned something, if not inspired by it. Uh, if you haven't already, check out our Pulp Adventure VFX short. It was a ton of fun to work on and learn all of these different effects and get really creative with it. I'll certainly be posting more tutorials having to do with this short film and all of the effects we did in it. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment below the video here or send me an email at gwsfilms at gmail.com. Thanks again for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.